Hello, I am going to show you today how to upload your book into Ingram Spark. Ingram Spark is another opportunity for you to have your book distributed or made available to distributors and bookstores around the world. Um, it's a great in addition to create space I always publish on both and I encourage you to publish on both too unless you have a reason why not to um, small bookstores and retailers often will order their books through Ingram spark and you will understand why as we go through this process uh, largely because Amazon has um, has destroyed small small brick and mortar bookstores but also because through Ingram spark they're able to order at um, at retailer discounts and they're able to return books if they don't want them. So the first thing you have to do is go to ingramspark.com and set up your account. So if you haven't done that yet and you want to try and move along here with me, then I suggest you pause this, come back and do that, and then come back. So um, while um, you are setting up your account or thinking about these things. If you already have a book published on Create Space, go ahead and pull that one up as well. And I'm going to show you some things. I always set my book up on Create Space first, which this is what the inside of that looks like, because then it's just a matter of copying and pasting. Additionally, Create Space is actually quite a bit easier to um, to load and publish a book. It's very, very straightforward. Um, you know, I didn't I don't usually have any issues trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing and um, and I can work out all the kinks by doing it this way. Also, once you publish a book, have you ever like gotten your first copy of it and you're like, oh my gosh, where did all of these mistakes come from? How did nobody notice these misspellings and things? You see different things. So um, I like to go ahead and publish, get it all done on Create Space, and then come back to Ingram Spark. And for two reasons. One, Ingram Spark is more complicated, and two, um, you have to pay to publish and pay for revisions. Now, so I don't want to upload my book and publish through Ingram Spark until I know that all the kinks are worked out and I don't have any more errors to be fixed. So um, usually there's a coupon code that you can use, but uh, if if there's no coupon code available, it does cost um, about forty nine dollars. Okay, so we're just starting to move all of our books over. Um, we were not publishing through Ingram Spark for a while, and um, it really wasn't until I got up to the Book Expo in New York where I was speaking to different book retailers, and they were like, "Look, if you're not if you're not pushing your books through Ingram Spark or making them available, we're not going to buy them." So I was like, "Okay, well this is interesting." So after you've set up your account cuz they're not going to let you move forward until you have your tax information, all of your personal information, your banking information, all of that stuff set up. Once you've finished your account, you will have a blank screen here. There will be nothing here. So you'll have the add new title option and you're going to click on add new title. And it's fairly self-explanatory in terms of the first few pages on what you need to do. So I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm actually going to pause the video so that you don't have to watch me doing all this back and forth and copying and pasting. But I'll be copying and pasting in the title, subtitle, language, short description, keywords, and full description. Okay? Okay, I've been copying and pasting. Obviously, I have my title, my subtitle, the language. Now, this is something that is not offered on CreateSpace, which is new. It's a max 350 character short description. So this is like the key information that you want people to know about your book. Um, so you just get a little snippet here, and you put that in there. I've used 295 characters already, so you can see how short that is. Then you have your space for your keywords, and you're supposed to separate by semicolons, which, oops, um, I didn't do. Um, now I'm sidetracking myself here. Okay, then down here you have the opportunity to put your full description, which can be up to 4,000 words. So there's a lot of space there for giving a really solid um description. Obviously if it's part of a series you're going to put that here. Now, I'm going to sidetrack for just a second um, and I'm going to go over to KDP Rocket and do an idea search for my keywords. So I want to see 
what's out there to make sure that I'm using the best keywords possible. If you're not familiar with KDP Rocket, it's uh, done by Dave Chesson, who's the Kindlepreneur. It'll show you all the books that are in the competition and how many Google searches there are for them. So you can see that there's a lot of people searching for writing a book, but there's also a very high level of competition in it. But I'm going to look at this anyway, and I'm going to just see what the competition is. Unleash the categories. This is new. And quite awesome, if I must, if I must say. Okay, so we're gonna there's a lot of books out there and they're doing fairly well actually. So I can look at their titles and I can kind of see what's happening here. I can see where the categories are. Start writing your book today. Draft to finish manuscript, writing that, and I can get some ideas on keywords based on some of these titles. So, all right, so writing a nonfiction book. What else did we see over here? Publishing a book. Um, outlining your novel. Starting a book. Okay, so that's kind of an idea of how that can help me, and you can see what's going on out there. And you can also get an idea of the categories that you're going to want to choose to put it in. Um, huh, interesting. Lots of different categories out there that you can choose. Words, language, I don't think some of these show up though in our thing. Anyway, I digress. I like to use that. You can do that before you get into the Ingram Spark thing. You can do that. Um, before you do create space forever. I hadn't really filled this out. If you look at my expert setup on here, I had one, I had just put in how to write a book, <laughs> which did I even put that on Ingram Spark yet? How to write a book. That's a good one. Okay. You get a few more um, keywords on Ingram Spark than you do on Create Space. Just make sure that you're doing them right with the good grief. Semicolon in between. Okay, so then we're gonna go on to step two. Step two is very simple. You're just going to oops, continue on here. Now this is where those category things are gonna come in handy. I like this one because it gives you more options on the bisect code. So we're gonna put, um, I'm just gonna see what happens when I just search book. Okay. Doesn't help me there much, does it? Oh, there's all kinds of them though. That's it, I write a book. Let's see, we'll go to reference and see what happens. Okay, this is the problem with the bisect subject lookup in um, Ingram Spark. It's so big and broad that if you don't know specifically what you're looking for, it can be really hard. So, or you can go to the bisect code page itself, which is the official Thing, at the official listing of things, and I know that reference is one of them, so I can go to reference writing skills. Let's see what happens when I go to Ingram Spark with that writing skills. There we go. Check. All right. to do this and pause it so you guys don't have to watch this. Okay, I'm back. So I've gone through and I found the three that I'm going to use for now, 
to reference writing skills, self-help creativity, and um, authorship under language arts and disciplines. I don't know that I'm thrilled with that one. I probably will come back and mess with that later, but for now, that's what we're going with. All right, and generally speaking, you're going to pick trade and general as your audience. Um, if you're writing a children's book, obviously you're going to do something different. Uh, you could go with professional or scholar here, just depending on what it is, etc. If I had a table of contents, I would put that here. I do not. If I had review quotes already, I would put those here. I do not. Um, but this is a great place to show off your book. I do not have any photographs or illustrations. All right, this is the important stuff. What trim size is it going to be? Most people these days are doing either 5 by 8 or 6 by 9. Mine is 6 by 9. It is black and white printed on white paper. It is a paperback. Um, perfect bound is what you're normally going to choose. Saddle stitch is only for smaller books. And then it's just up to you whether you want gloss or matte. Um, depending on the book, it depends on what I, I like mostly in, in, in matte, but this particular book with the cover, I like to have in gloss, so that's completely up to you. Then you need to know some details about your book, like the page count and things like that. So you can find that once you've completed your uh, thing right here. 164 pages. Okay, this is where you need to know your ISBN and this is where it's very important when you published through CreateSpace that you did not check, I'm going to show you the channels right here, that you did not check this one, the expanded distribution basically. You can do CreateSpace direct um, but really, you want to make sure that you don't check bookstores and online retailers because then it technically distributes to Ingram Spark, and Ingram Spark is going to think that you're in their system, but you're not really. So you want to make sure uh, you want to make sure that you don't check that channel that you just check the Amazon channels. Okay. And as long as you haven't distributed already through CreateSpace, you should have no problems with your ISBN here. You can also purchase an ISBN if you have not published through. Um, and you can get a non-distributable SKU. This is the option you would pick if you're going for like um, advanced re review copies. If you want to um, print out a bunch of advanced review copies to hand out, you're going to go with this option before you put your ISBN in there. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit trickier and something that a lot of people don't know. Um, I have it priced at $19.99 for this thing. You go over to create space and it's going to show you maybe doesn't want to adjust here it's going to show you what the minimum price for the title is and um, what the suggested price for euro and the British pound are based on um, based on the current rate okay so I take those numbers over here and I plug them in. Now, wholesale discount. This is the tr the fifty five percent trade is the typical um, rate that you're going to choose. This is what most bookstores need to see before they're going to order your book. If you choose no for returnable, you're opting out of a lot of places because they want to make sure that if they buy them and their audience doesn't buy them, they can send them back. In the U.S., I turn, click yes, returnable, yes, deliver, because shipping is not insane. However, for everybody else, and some places, it's on, the only option is destroy. Uh, yes, destroy, yes, destroy. For Canada, we're still destroying because that can get really expensive. And I know that's sad, but the fact of the matter is... Um, you'd rather get people to buy your books and then hope that they don't have to return them. But this is something you need to know about 
um, about the return process. So say they've bought the books and you've already received payment for the books. When they return your books, that money's coming right back out of your um, account again. So just be aware of that as an option. You can do other, but this is what most retailers want to see. Okay. Now I'm using the create space as a as as a basis, but not exactly. Um, and then just because I know that the Canadian dollar, where it usually runs, as opposed to the U.S. dollar, and if I recall correctly, the can the Australian dollar is pretty similar to the Canadian dollar. Okay, the Global Connect program, you can choose here. This allows you to offer wholesale-like solutions in countries where they don't have print-on-demand. Um, so you can you can do this. It's available. They can order them. Um, um, it's just another, another way to get them out there. And then what's the publication date going to be? I'm going to put November 1st. I'm sorry, the publication date is actually a little bit sooner. I'll put the, today's date. And then the on sale date is November 1st. And this allows you to go ahead and get your book in the system, but people can't purchase it yet. So um, that's a good way to see it's going to tell you. If, if, if anybody tries to purchase this date before then, they won't get it until the on sale date. You have the option to print and ship and order, blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. I'm just going to normally, um, my book is already printed. So I just go ahead and make them the same date and it's not an issue. Okay. So here you'll have to have your, um, your interior PDF and your specially formatted just for Ingram spark cover here. Um, make sure that you're working with designers to do your interior the proper way on both of these things. Okay. Um, I'm not going to load this stuff up right now because I don't feel like finding it, but normally keep it in an easy place to find. You're going to upload, you're going to upload. At that point in time, you're going to hit continue. They will do a quick review of your book and let you know if there's a, t a problem or an issue. Okay. If there are any issues at all, it will immediately tell you there's something wrong with the cover. There's something wrong with the interior. It will tell you. Uh, if it's something that they can fix or if it's something that you need to fix and upload a new file. So that'll come on the next screen. And then the following screen will be, um, what you, will you say, yes, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's good to go. I approve it. And it goes through and then it goes into validation. Once it'll take probably 24 to 48 hours for them to validate. Once they give you the opportunity, you can come back and you can review a proof. So you'll be able to come back into the system. You click on it. You look at the proof. If it looks good, like you thought it should look, you can approve it. And at that point, they take you to the checkout page. On the checkout page is where you will find um, uh, the information on how much it's going to cost. Normally, it's a cover setup and an interior setup. And each one of them is a certain charge that adds up to $49. Uh, till the end of the year, you can use the code get published. Uh, there usually is some kind of code in existence so that you don't have to pay for that fee. But don't approve and pay until you know for sure that this is the final, final, final version and you are not intending on making any other changes. Because if you have to upload revisions, you will get a charge. So that is um, your instructional video on loading to Ingram Spark, plus a little bonus on using um, KDP for keywords and categories and if you have any questions at all you can find me on facebook under uh the on the right published cell facebook page or in the right published cell facebook group we answer all kinds of questions or on my website you can come at rightpublishedcell.co and i'm happy to answer any questions and help you thanks so much and i hope this uh helps you as you load your books to ingram spark